Hi guys, good eve good evening. I hope you're doing well. I thank God that we can meet today. There's been a lot of movement. God is in God is in control. God is in control. God is in control. I hope all of you are, I hope all of you have had a wonderful day. Good evening. I'm just waiting for more people to join before we move forward. But let's just take this time to to thank God for bringing us together today. Let's just thank God for allowing for allowing him allowing him to move through us, allowing him to work through us, allowing him to to keep us safe. You know, we do not know what plans, what plots the enemy is doing, what has been what what people's personal agenda is for our lives, but we know what God's personal agenda is. And he has told us what we're going to be before before the in the beginning, God told us when we when we became Christians, he told us who we are in him, what he wants us to do. And that is what we should listen to. So it's not looking at what everybody else is doing, not looking at any sort of spiritual, not looking at any sort of spiritual attack, not listening to any noise. God has told you what exactly he wants you to do. And that is the most important, important thing. I've always been saying that there's a period of time what I, I was saying, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? You know, man, God is showing me how the heart of man is truly wicked, as, as the scripture states. The heart of man is truly wicked. You may not know why people feel certain ways about you. You may not know why people do what they do. But again, it's not your problem. It's not your problem. Your problem is to keep focused on the report that God has given you. This is who you are. This is the mark you are running to. This is your race. This is your lane. Right? The Bible says it is narrow. It's a, a, a right the, the, the road of righteousness. It is a narrow road. So God is not expecting you to go with a big crowd of people, you know, um, standing beside you. You're supposed to trust in God and his report, what he has told you. Everything, every sort of passion, every sort of desire in your heart. It's God that placed it there. You already know when you were young, you know certain things, certain things you, you, you gravitated towards, certain things you, you, your abilities, you just naturally do it. And then, and it was your, it was now for you to now refine them. There's even certain things that I didn't get a chance to do when I was a child. And I am looking at them now right it doesn't mean you know just because when I was younger <laughs> maybe I didn't have a chance to do certain things or um, you know there wasn't anyone to invest time in that particular um, passion but I'm choosing to still look at those particular areas and see if I can still have fun with them and see who knows where it, it will go you know this is how God works he puts the desire in your heart so I'm going to go, go ahead and do certain things. And I want you guys to also go ahead and do certain things that you wanted to do when you were younger. Maybe certain thi- maybe because of certain situations, you, God did not allow um, or give you the opportunity. But there's a reason for everything. There's a reason for everything. You know, don't bury your talents. You do not know where God will take you. You do not know what that particular talent will do for you. I think for me anyway, the... I think for me now, um, it, it makes sense, certain talents that I want to try out now. Um, things I wanted, I wanted to do when I was younger, but didn't get the chance to because of my health. Um, you know, I want to keep healthy. I keep telling you guys, go to the gym, work out. Right, so it's all a part of um, me, me, me staying healthy and learning, n- learning a, new, a new part of myself. Right, so listen to the report. You know, sit back. Um, we just passed the Jewish holiday, and it was, it was. Um, I think it's called Rosh Hashan, and what it was, um, what the the holiday is about is you just reflecting of what on what you could have done better, just reflecting on your life, and you know, it's it's powerful. You know, it's not it's not because you're older. It's not because 
um, you know, I, I wish I, you know, you're, you're just hoping you could have, you could have, you can still do it now. You know, if you could just find one day in the week, even, and it's not even a whole day, it might just be four hours, an hour, just to do something that you, you may not ha have had the opportunity to do, and you don't know what, what God will use it for. And I'm seeing now for the things that I want to do, God is teaching me a, a new way to worship him, a new way to use my feet. Right, I've learned how to do certain things um, in a different, in the worldly manner. But God is showing me how to use my feet, right? To worship him with my feet and not in a worldly manner. So these are things that, again, you do not know why. But as I'm, as I'm sharing with you and encouraging you to, you know, hold on to the report of God, especially things that you've done, you know, God has said to you when you were younger, or certain talents you noticed you wanted to do, you didn't have time. You know, now is the time to just, you know, I'm encouraging you because I know what it can mean, what it could do for you. It could just be something to just make you um, less stressed, help you to relax. You know, I don't know what God will do. I don't know how he works again. He shows us how he works, but again, he's mysterious. I don't know 100% of the 100% of God. Like, I don't know how he, he um, you know, his full plan, but again, that's, to protect us like I always say there's um a bread loaf right so there's a bread loaf and our daily bread what God gives us every day if God gave us the whole loaf right the enemy can just take everything at once but he gives us um a little bit every day a little bit every day like manna right he gave us manna every day every day he gave us the right amount of manna he said we should take what he, he told the Israelites, children of Israel, to, to take exactly what they needed. And every day they had the right amount. They had the right amount for them each day. So God did not give them the whole amount and expect them to um, now keep it somewhere. And, and then, you know, just to be taken from it. Right. So it's the fact it, God is just helping us understand and to, to see that we need him. Like we're not proud, right? God, we need you every day. We need you. We acknowledge you every day. We receive our daily bread every day. Whatever you've called for us to have, whatever you have called for us to learn, whatever you, whatever, it might just be a, um, stumbling onto a new um, style of worship as well, right? Looking for new worship music. I will post um, um, new worship music. I have like, I think I have three now that my spirit is um, is good with. So I'll, I'll post that and you guys can share um, and worship with that those groups of people. But again, it could be anything. But the point is for us to focus on the report of the Lord, right? The Bible states the heart of man is evil. And God is showing me every day the different type of, the different areas and styles of of the, the the heart of man right the bible is the truth and I, I know at times it's hard for us to believe the truth but the bible is the truth it's telling us the bible tells us exactly um what we are to expect what god wants from from us it's the report confirming your reports this is what i want you to do Achieve this when you meet me and stand before me. Now give me, give me a breakdown. You now discuss, this is what I gave you. What did you do with it? Right, so focus on the report of God. Man will do what man will do. But God will also do what God will do. The Bible states, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And I want you guys to remember that when God was creating everything in the universe, he also was creating the cosmics. So I want you, I want you to understand that don't think that any sort of spirit is on this earth without God knowing what the spirit is doing. I want you to understand, do not think, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not think that any sort of, do not think that any sort of, just bear with me guys, do not think that any sort of 
any sort of um do not think that any sort of any sort of movement anything is happening in this planet the bible says there's a scripture that, that, that states that you could a man could try to hide under the deepest sea god will still find him a man will now try can also try to hide under the um on top of the highest mountain god will still find him right so understand what is happening around us god knows god knows and he's already in in the future he stands in now he stands in yesterday today and forevermore so that is that is who has given you your report the god that has given you your report do not allow anyone to challenge that report from God in your life. Do not allow, do not allow anyone to try to shake you based on what God has said. What the word of God, right? Before the Bible states, when, when God was creating, creating the world, the word, the Bible states, he hovered over the sea, right? He hovered over the waters. And the word was with God and the word was God. So understand that it is the word of God that keeps everything together. It is the word of God. The word. So this is what the word of God can do alone. Right? This is not God showing off. This is not God. This is just God being orderly with his word. So believe. Believe. The report, believe the report of the Lord over what you're seeing. Keep going as much as you can. Right? At times, God may, may need for us to be patient and wait. You know, I don't know the kind of season you're in. Right? But, yeah. But it's, it's good for us to allow, allow, just allow God to do what God does. Allow God to do what God does. In the end, it makes sense. I can guarantee that to you and I can say that confidently that at the end of everything it starts to make sense. It starts to make sense. It starts to make sense. And you now it now builds your faith in him. It builds your faith and it encourages you. Right? So let's just thank God that we're that he has allowed us to meet today. We're we're, we're healthy. You know, he continues to heal, heal, heal us when the enemy is attacking and laughing and boasting. He shames those who mock, he, he mocks those who mock, mock us. The Bible says that, the Bible says that it's the evil man in the, in the day. There is a day that the evil man, that the shame that is, it is, that, that the evil man faces. There is a particular day that the Bible talks about when it, it, it comes out. Like you, you understand exactly what God is talking about. Right? So just your report. What is God saying? Not what this person is saying or what that person is saying. Right? Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Hold on to the report of God. Right? Because it is only God that you're going to stand in front of and explain right this is what you gave me understood especially as a christian you have no excuse right this is what you said this is your report right you gave me this book in support i now have um the report paper right <laughs> and we're standing in front of god no one else will be there no one else will be there so we have to learn how to move with that confidence Move with that exact confidence that you know it is God. Everything that is happening on this planet, God knows. God knows. God knows. Do not feel fearful. God knows. Everything that is happening on this planet, God knows. God knows. Right, so hold on to God. Let's just... Let's just thank God for, again, allowing us to meet. That God, we do not take this any, any, any time that we have with you, any time 
that we get to meet any time that we're awake, any time that we're, we're sleeping. Lord, we do not know what you're doing, but we know that we're safe and we're thanking you for keeping us. We're thanking you for keeping us. We're thanking you for allowing us to be, to be together, to be here together, to be, to, to, to speak about your word, to, to build, to build within your word. Lord, we're thankful. Lord, we're thankful. Let us just, let's speak in tongues and just invite God in. Let's just speak in tongues. Lord, we're thankful. Lord, we, we thank you that you are the God. You are the God that takes care of us. You are the God that fights for us. Lord, you are the God that loves us. Lord, you are the God that stays by us no matter what. Lord, you are the God. You are our family. You are our husband. You are our best friend. Lord, you are the God. You, you are our protector. There is nothing that you aren't to us. Lord, you are everything to us. Lord, you are everything to us. Lord, we are thankful. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see certain things. Lord, we may not understand what is going on. 
Lord, in, in, in us seeking for knowledge, your, Lord, your, your word says my people die because of lack of knowledge. Lord, in, in, in you allowing us to seek, to find and knock and the door will be open. Lord, thank you for revealing certain things to us so we can have a deeper understanding. Lord, we continue to give you all the praise to worship you and to serve you because you're the God that protects us. Lord, it is not man, it is not man, it is not the glory of man that can keep us. It is not the wealth of man that can keep us. Lord, it is not, it is not, it is not in riches, it is, it is not in, 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 in worldly things that can keep us. But Lord, it is, in, it, is, is in, is, it is in pleasing you, Lord, your word says, that us being just obedient to your word, you can turn the hearts, you can turn the hearts of, of those who are our enemies. Lord, it is you, it is you that we are working to please, not man. It is you that we are working to please, Lord. And we are hoping, we are hoping, we're praying, Lord, that, our, that we are walking in accordance to your will, that you are keeping us in accordance to your will. Lord, help us not to, to step out of the way of your will for our lives. Lord, help us to walk in accordance to your will. Lord, help us to walk in accordance to your will. Lord, help us to walk in accordance to your will. Lord, help us to work in a, walk in accordance to your will. Lord, help us to walk in accordance to your will. Lord, help us to walk in accordance to your will. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we prayed. Amen and amen. My head. <laughs> My head. Um, again, I've been telling you people connect somehow with people's head, heads. I said that in the first video. Um, God has revealed certain things to me, but I'm going to show mercy. And I'm going to expect, again, mercy from the other individual. But again, the Bible says that we're, we, are, we are judged by the scales in which we weigh. We weigh, we weigh, we weigh our actions, weigh in accordance to how we treat others. So I'm going to show mercy, but I'm going to reveal, I am going to reveal, I'm going to reveal at some point to protect myself, to protect those who are, those who are, are, possi are possibly being um, tricked into certain things. I always speak out when there is a mass, a number of people being harmed. So I'm going to show mercy and I expect in the mighty name of Jesus that they repent. I'm going to show mercy. I expect that they repent. As I'm sitting here, there's someone trying to connect with my head. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as if that they repent. I pray that they, rep they repent. And they, they use the same scales that they have been using for others. That they hope that God will also use, use those same scales for them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Azur. God is amazing. You'll be sitting there and at times we sit there and we try to think, we try to figure out what is going on. How is this happening? But again, when God shows us knowledge, when God gives us knowledge, he exposes us to certain things. You know, when you're going through certain things, do not, do not get angry at God. Do not get angry at God. Sit back and learn. Sit back and learn and, and, and go through every emotion. Go through everything God is trying to show you. That is how you build. That is how God, that is how God can use you. Because if you didn't know certain things, especially with business and work, right, you will, when you're moving forward, you wouldn't know what to avoid that could harm you. Right, especially with... Um, you know, how, how individuals relate with, you know, between ourselves. There's certain things we have to, to go through to know. Right? Do not, do not, do not, do not be angry at God. God is trying to just expose more to you. Do not be angry at God. God is trying to expose more to you. Right? And he can only do that at, he can only do at, do certain things when you you are going through a trial you know there's heavy attack and you know you that's when you see so much that's when you see so much god shows you so much within that period right so instead of us trying to um 
be frustrated and say, oh my God, you know, this, um, this Christianity, this is this, oh, this. Stop and let God teach you. Every attack is the enemy exposing himself. This is how he works also. Right? So next time you would, you would avoid it. You know how to protect those around you. Right? So do not, do not, do not, do not, again, every attack is a lesson. Every attack. There's so many ways, again, that the enemy, God is showing me the enemy works, even by symbolism. Simple symbolism. Simple symbolism. Right? How, how individuals talk between themselves, knowingly and unknowingly. Just a simple a picture, simple, simple symbolism. I'll say symbolism because it could be anything. Right, could be a, 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 some kind of language that is being translated be between one party to the next. And that is something I've learned. And I wouldn't have learned that if I was comfortable, if I was sitting at home, um, not going through anything that was shaking me spiritually. Right, so please do not choose the option of complaining when you are going through, when you're going through trials, when God is allowing the enemy to show you a different version of Himself. That's all it is. This is what else He can do. Right, so we go for it because we're the Christians. We go for it. And then we can now help and prevent those to stop going, those to possibly not die from it, but to learn how to fight from it. Right, I believe at times God may want some individuals to go for it and to make it a lot easier for those um, who could possibly go for it, but they have. They, they, have, they've had, they have the opportunity to get knowledge, wisdom. But whatever you have gone through, whatever trial you have gone through with God, that God has put you through, right? So do not complain, especially now, especially for those, I'll say, for those who are hoping to marry, right? So this is what I'll be talking about. This is what God has, has um, been placing on my heart to talk about. And what I am seeing and how, you know, the Bible says we're not to be unevenly yoked. And there are reasons for that. Right? You, 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 you fall in love with someone that is not, you know, of, that does not have the same belief as you. It, it will be, it will be, um, it will be hard. It will be hard. It's like you're, you're it's almost like you're, you're, Trying to marry someone speaking an, another language. Right? It will definitely be hard. And I am going to get those, by the way. So we're, again, so we're teaching... God has um, placed on my heart to teach about the experience from dating to marriage. Right? We talk at whatever level we're on. Right? We talk from our living testimonies. Right? And our current living testimonies. At times, I don't know if God will take us back and learn from certain things, but we talk about our own living testimonies. Right? We teach from, from, from whatever God has has decided to, has got, whatever God has decided to show us. Right? So we talk from whatever God has decided to show us. Right? In whatever point in our life. So we teach from that. And that is the style God has placed in my heart. Everyone has their own different style. So, um, so we're talking about, I say, but I, uh, I'm teaching about, <laughs> I'm teaching about um, being set up, 
right? So being set up, right? So you're, you're possibly at a stage where you want to marry. Some, some, some of you might be married already. So I, I'm, sure you can, I'm sure you can understand, especially when you were looking for your husband or your wife. <laughs> you had, you could, you could, you could understand what exactly um, I'm talking about. You can, understand, you can understand exactly, especially if you, you allowed God to work. You know, there's processes that God takes us through. So there's the trials and then there's the building. So not every not every process we that we that we that God puts us that God puts us through, right? Is is um it's not like a not everything is spiritual attack. Sometimes it's just keeping quiet and watching. Right? So you you're hoping to marry, so you're going through the stages of dating. Right? So you're going through the stages of dating. And I'm just going to read again what God is showing me. And I'm hoping in the mighty name of Jesus, God will open your eyes. You can see deeper to what he, is, he has shown me. Right? So the devil knows you're interested in getting married. Right? Um, so around this time or even... So around this time or even before sex... sex even before sex... Sex shouldn't be an option, right? So you're telling God you want to marry and if you've been active, this is a great time to hand everything over to God because we've gone through, you know, you've gone, you're going through a different type of relationship, right? We understand that connecting too quickly at deep at a deeper level right can can stop us from thinking deep deeper can clear up can blur can possibly blur our minds right because um any anything to do with sexual intercourse it it kind of keeps you away from seeing the truth right so it makes everything sweet sweet sweeter than it it it, it, it is Right, so the Bible states that in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. Right, thou shalt not commit adultery. So we should not be, when we're, especially when we're looking for a husband or a wife, right, for, 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 for the men that are watching, for those who are looking for a wife, the women, those who are looking for a husband, right? Sex is a tool that the enemy can use to destroy completely. Right, I'm going to read from, just bear with me. I'm reading now from Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, and it states, But whoso commandeth, committeth adultery with a woman, lacketh understanding. Right, he that doeth it, destroyeth his own soul. So God is saying here that to commit adultery or to have, you know, to have or perform any sort of fornication, do, you know, connect with anyone sexually before you get married. God is talking about before you get into marriage. God is saying that it destroys the soul. It destroys the soul. Right, so the process that God wants to take an individual who wants to get married, right, it's your shedding of if you were, if you were sexually active, you're shedding and you're going through levels of deliverance, right? Because the Bible states, the Bible states in Genesis chapter 30, verse 1 to 4. Let me just read that. Just bear with me. I'm going to read that from the Bible. So I'm reading now from Genesis chapter 30 to, to verse 1 to 4. And it states, and when, and when Rachel saw 
that she bare she bare Jacob. So this is the story about Rachel, um, Rachel's Rachel's sister marrying Jacob. But Rachel's sister was not who Jacob wanted. So um, her father tricked her father tricked Jacob to marrying her sister, her older sister, because he believed in his tradition. He said to Jacob that it is better for the older sister to marry. Right. So he tricked Jacob to marry um, the older sister. So now Rachel has a chance to also marry Jacob because he still, thank God, he, he was in love with her. He kept on and he and he um, he eventually paid the bride price for Rachel. And this is the story about um, Rachel and Jacob now. And when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob, Jacob, no children, Rachel advanced her, sorry, envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. Right? So she, Rachel was barren. Right? She was watching her sister have so many children for her for her husband he was tricked into marrying her oldest older sister and she was now watching <laughs> um her them have children somehow rachel could not have children i'm reading now from verse two and jacob's and jacob's anger was kindled against rachel and he said am i Am I, am I in God's stead? Who has withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid, Balaha, go into her. Right, so Rachel is telling Jacob to go into her maiden, to have children for her because she could not have children for him at that time and and she gave him bala balaha that's her maiden her her handmaid to wife right so she gave her husband her handmaiden to wife and jacob went into her I'll read that again. And she gave him Bala, Balaha, her handmaid to wife, her husband. Right? So Jacob, the sexual intercourse between her maiden and her husband confirmed marriage. Right? So the deliverance process that we have to go through. Right? When shedding, if those who have, have stepped out, and been, um, you know, been sexually active before marriage, right? Or in the process before before allowing God to fully take over, right? Understand that the Bible is stating they are your husbands, they are your wives. So it is a it is a deliverance process, a shedding. Depending on how, depending on the mercy of God. It will all come out in one day, <laughs> right? The way God showed it to me, what the way God revealed it to me, it was almost like, um, it was almost like, it was almost like a. Um, we were praying, and I was a part of a prayer group, and there was intense prayer. And it was almost like I was awake, right? It was not like, oh, this was, I was awake. And I could, I could see it, it was like mists. It was like mists. So different mists coming out of me, different. Right? So it, it is a soul tie. It's an, it is a marriage between you and your husband. So the deliverance process for me, it was quick. One day, 
I, everything detached, right? So um, through that process, again, holding on to God, this is why I say to you, do your best to, 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 to go through the process of cel celibacy. When you're telling God, okay, you want to marry, you need your mind. You need a sound mind. You do not need too much emotions, especially with marriage, when you're trying to understand who you're with. It's not too much emotion. It's more, it's more about, okay, this is a partner. How are we going to do this um, for the rest of our lives? So to make that particular decision for the rest of your lives to be with someone. High levels of emotion, any sort of sexual intercourse, again, it would blur, it would, it would add more, it would just make everything look a lot more sweeter than it is. So God is allowing me to, to see, God is allowing me to see twins, two of every kind of person, right? He or she may look like your husband, wife, but people can be influenced by the devil to date or marry the wrong person, right? So God is revealing certain things to me as well. Um, you know, I don't know if it's, if it's God just saying that I have made enough for you. There's that good side about, um, God revealing to me, almost you can see someone, maybe you were dating, it didn't work out, but exactly the same person, the look, the look, <laughs> they look the same. They could look exactly the same. It's amazing. Look exactly the same, I guess, with a different character because they're definitely two different people. Right? But, you know, if that is a type of, 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 um, the type of, if that's the type of person that your heart, heart is longing for, just know that God can create, God has created many of your types, even to the point of identical, them looking close to identical. Right, God has God God has given us enough. There is enough. There is enough. God has given us enough. Right? You could see God is showing me there is exactly somebody else, possibly another country that looks exactly like that person you thought maybe broke your heart, maybe took you through something, but you like them. So God can also offer you the same type of person, the same look, right? But again, if that is the will of God, that is what God will present to you. But this is the, this is the process of what God is showing me. So do not, um, do not think God cannot give you what you need. Do not think God cannot, cannot provide more for you. Right, you're seeing certain things, you're not happy with certain things, and you're, you know, at times you may feel, okay, what a wow, um, you know, you may deserve better. I don't know how you're feeling, right? Or you may be happy, you're enjoying whatever you're, you know, whatever process you're going through with God, and you're marrying. But there's so many. We're we're all at different stages of our lives, right? But I want us to know that God can definitely give you. God has prepared that same person for you. God has prepared that is same. May they have different. They may have different um, a different character. But if you have a particular style, we're told to write down our, our lists, our list of what we're expecting from God as a you know from a um, from our husband or from, you know, for males, for a wife, right? So if you're really, if you write this in detail, God will, God can do it. God can do it. But God has also showed me that the enemy also knows. <laughs> the enemy also knows what you're looking for. 
So this identical twin can also be, <laughs> this identical twin can also look like um, someone you used to like. It may, maybe it didn't work out. I don't know, whatever the situation. But this same identical twin could be a plot from the enemy. I say identical twin because it's, they look exactly like the person, but they're not the person. Right? God has also shown me that, um, I know there's a, there's two, I, I, I've spoken about this in the other teaching, but there's like a traditional, um, I believe I spoke about this in another teaching, but there's traditional, um, I think like some, I think a hundred years back or so, I know, um, individuals used to be afraid of twins. So I know that people would have twins and just be afraid and keep them somewhere. You know, they wouldn't, um, it wasn't a cultural thing to have twins. Right there, again, there's so many, um, <laughs> there's so many things that, that link with twins, right? But again, the Bible tells us the story about that, especially with Jacob and Esau. Right, but again, I don't know the reasons, but there's a re there's one particular um, I don't know the many reasons, but there's one particular um, there's one particular spiritual process God has shown me that the enemy can use to 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 make somebody look like something they're not. So let's read from. First John chapter four, verse seven, and it states, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. Right? And everyone that loveth is born of God. So what God is saying that everyone that loveth is born of God. Right? So those who can love. So God is saying that those we have humans that have, the Bible states, have an evil heart, right? The Bible states that. But there are also individuals that have been crafted by the enemy. Individuals that have been crafted out of impatience, right? They look like they are born of this world, but they are not, they are not born of God. Right, they're not part of God's architecture. They're not born. They are not born of love. Right? God had nothing to do with the conception. Right? So I want you to understand that you could also bump into someone who is out of the architecture of God completely. Someone could be um an impatient a a product of impatience not waiting on god doing stuff rushingly right so you could you could possibly if you if you step out and i rebuke that in jesus name you will not step out but if an individual i'll say it like this if an individual steps out of being um, unevenly yoked, being unevenly yoked with um, someone that they're trying to marry, they may not be born of God. They may not be born naturally of God. They may not have been placed with love right in the womb of a woman. So I want you to make yourselves aware of what is out there, the devices of the enemy, right? So that is one, that's one angle. There's also those who are not spiritually strong. We were praying and we're going through whatever, um, whatever um, trial God has taken us through. But for those who are not praying and fighting and, and you know, living a Christian life to the best of their ability, with the with the hundred percent help of the Holy Spirit, can you imagine the 
the influence and the demonic activity. Right? Um, you know, and how can you imagine what else will be leading them? What spirit will be leading them? So you as a Christian, you will be following, unknowingly going with a, a spirit you, you do not know that is leading someone you're hoping to, to be a spouse, can you imagine what kind of traps the enemy will set? Can you imagine? So this is why the Bible says, do not be unevenly yoked. Right? Marry, marry a Christian. This is what the Bible is advising. This is what the Bible is advising. Right? But again, I'll say... Again, this is the word of God. We're told to use it as a shield. And it is our buckler, our shield and buckler, right? So God is taking me through this process. And he's showing me. He's showing me these things. Right? He's showing me these things. So I want us to be aware of what is out there. Especially when it comes to marriage. So another, um, another way for us to avoid, um, another reason for us to avoid stepping out, right? So you're going through the process of, um, for those who are not married, going through the process of getting married, right? So an individual who steps out, they're again opening themselves up to possibly catching a sexual transmitted disease. Right, the enemy. This this point is so sensitive sensitive because you're not you're not again you're not walking by yourself. So you're trying to get to a point of partnership and growth. There's favor. There's so much that comes with marriage. Right, there's favor. There's so much that comes with marriage. So, do you believe that the enemy would want for 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 any marriage to be to be or or to be you know to be successful or to move in the spirit of god so when we're going through the process of okay god give us our spouse we have to be even we have to be on guard i was gonna say even more careful but the bible states on guard the bible says stay on guard so now if you're going through that process of marrying Staying on guard. It's your <laughs> that scripture to should be um you should take that you should take that scripture even more seriously. Even more seriously because these are the things out there. God is exposing the things out there. God is exposing the many things out there. Not everything is part of God's architecture. Right, so if it's not part of God's will or architecture, it is it is a hundred percent the enemies. And God also exposed um, the, the the external attacks that could possibly be used for, let me just read it. The fight against marriages, right, also can be a plan to reduce it, to reduce nations, populations as a whole. So God exposed cer certain things to me, that to reduce a population, right, the enemy can set certain traps, can set certain traps to, to stop possibly marriage altogether. That's what the enemy could possibly use, but we rebuke that in Jesus' name. Right? To reduce... Okay, these are the strategies. Again, the enemy could place this particular desire. Remember, I've just, I've just, I've just broken down the, the fact that this on this side of... <laughs> 
on this side of the world on this side okay this side is god right this is this is the way of god this is the way of the world on this side it could be anything you're dealing with so the enemy can place any sort of desire in their heart it might not even be their own will because it is not under the governance of god god knows it's happening Right, but this is why God has placed us here to pray. So a strategy, a strategy like that will be something that will be placed. It is all it's all a part of the devil's strategy to reduce a population and to corrupt to corrupt a particular population or different populations. Right, so these are strategies of the enemy. Right, so again, how do when I say to reduce or to um, right? So we had one. There's like the enemy hoping to stop marriages totally, but then you also have the enemy wanting you to marry, marry and fight the marriage. Right, this is the enemy. By wanting an individual to marry to fight the marriage, and the marriage is now broken. So that is another strategy, but that is also God has revealed a strategy that could also reduce populate a population. Because if you are together, you've loved you love each other, there's no true reason, right? I'm gonna say if an individual is together. There's no reason they should have broken up. It is spiritual attack, right? And and they loved each other, but they could not somehow find anyone else to be with. And they only had one child. That is also a, a strategy of the enemy to reduce a population. Right, so these are ways that the enemy fights against marriages. So when you're thinking about the rest of your life, you have to have these, these, this type of mindset, right? Marriage is not a competition. Marriage is not to um, outshine somebody else. The Bible says competition, that we are not to compete as Christians. We're to, if God calls it as if to, it's like reducing yourself, first of all. But it's, to, it's almost like it's, it's almost like you're insulting God as well, because you're saying that your own, the way He created you, is not good enough. So when you're trying to marry, or 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 you're you're getting, you know, God is placing in your ma- your mind that okay, you're starting to yearn for for marriage, or yearn for to have a, or yearn to have a partner, and then take it to marriage. These are the things we have to look out for. Just bear with me. Right, so confirming what I was saying about what I was saying about marrying and sorry, what I was saying about marrying, about Sex being, being a, being the, the confirmation of a marriage, right? It is not, the Bible doesn't say, you know, they were standing at an altar and they did, they declared. The Bible says, as we read in the last scripture, Rebecca gave her handmaiden to her husband and he, she became his wife and she gave him a child, right? So he now had three wives. I'm reading now from the book of Leviticus, chapter chapter 2, verse 10. And it states, And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. So what God is saying in this scripture is, it is, it is something that, it is something that it is something that kills the soul. Right? Especially when you're already married. 
because in that marriage since it is your ties your, your your souls are together now and you're now one you know you're you're adding a third will to the marriage right and i rebuke that in jesus name you're not adding a third will to ma the marriage but individual if an individual as the scripture states if an individual steps out if the individual steps out of of you know their marriage and cheats they're, into, they're introducing a third will so instead of it being one body it now becomes one two three bodies somehow and there's like an imbalance right and if that and if again we do not know this type of spirit you know that individual may not know the type of spirit knowing knowing what's out there as god continues to open our eyes to what is out there that could have been a plot from the enemy right because again it is no longer one flesh it it, it becomes like i i was Right, the smart thing for us to say would be two. It would become two. So you have you and your the individual will have him and his husband, her and her and her husband, and you know a strange, something strange, a part of of that particular marriage. And the Bible would call it a third or second. Sorry, a second or a sec a second husband or a second wife. So that's why again when people step out of out cheat cheat while married, while they're married, right? <laughs> it's almost like they have to their spirit is yearning for the other spouse because they now have two. So that same control. That same control the first wife would have or the first husband will have the second or the the second wife or husband will have do you understand what i'm saying i hope you're you're getting the point right so this is the power of 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 you know being sexually active this is the power and this is the connection So I'm reading now from Psalms chapter 50 verse 18 and it st it states when thou sowest when thou sowest it's like saw it is basically saw but again I'm reading from King I'm reading from King James it states when thou sowest a teeth so 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 saw a teeth so when you see a, a teeth right teeth a teeth right someone that steals then then thou consented with him and has been partaker of adulteress adulteress right so god is saying here that to see someone that is is stealing to see someone that is stealing and to now you know join and to partake in whatever the person is stealing Right this is how God views views um sex. Right this is how God views sex especially within marriage. That someone is stealing someone else's especially when for 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 Rachel, right? Rachel gave husband approval because she wanted children. But the Bible is is structuring this scripture as to say it is to steal is like stealing and the bible also states that thieves do not go to heaven so this is i want you to see the how the mind of god right the word of god how the word of god sees how the word of god views this particular this particular act I'm reading now from um, 
Hosea chapter 7, verse 4. And it states, they are adulterous. They are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker who ceases right who ceases stops from rising after he has needleth the dough until it has livered right so god is saying here in this scripture it's like when the dough doesn't rise Right, when the dough doesn't rise. So any sort of sexual acts that is not within marriage. Right, God is saying it, it, is, it is hindering. It is a hindering tool. It causes an individual not to rise. It causes an, it causes an individual not to rise. Right, so when you're trying to do certain things and you keep falling back, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, when an individual is trying to do certain things and they keep falling back into to, to sex, into any sort of sexual acts, it is what is hindering them from, from moving forward. It is like a God is saying you do not rise, like a, this individual, I break down in Jesus' name, you rise in Jesus' name, but this individual does not rise. Right, God is saying adulterers, those who step out of marriage, those who, um, any sort of, I mean, you're not, you know, when an individual is not married, right? And both family has, haven't met, you know, the fathers will think or the, the family members will think, oh, this person is stealing because they haven't met. So they will also be looked upon as thieves, right? especially if bride price haven't, hasn't been paid. Right? So you can understand what a bride price is for those who do not understand in the book of Genesis, the story of Esau and Jacob. Right? So God is saying any sort of sex outside of marriage, it stops an individual from moving forward. So it is what the enemy is using to stop. To stop. I don't, I don't want to say it's what, it what the devil is using to it is it the bible is saying it stops it's like a it's like bread right it's like bread not rising can you imagine you've put you've put dough to sit you know when individuals are making bread when an individual is making bread i think if, if for those you've you, you've watched online or maybe you've seen it somewhere and at times they would leave the bread to sit right the dough to sit they haven't baked the bread yet Right, the dough is expected to rise after they've left it for like three minutes. And even in the oven, the bread will also rise even more, right, when it's cooked correctly. But what God is saying, it will not rise. So this is the power of having, having, having sex without marriage. The Bible says it stops. It stops growth. It stops rising. Right, but we thank God for the mercy of God. Right, that Jesus has died for us. But if you sit down and think, if you, especially when you haven't gone through deliverance, Right, the history of if the Bible is saying an individual has married just by sleeping with another individual, how many husbands or wives can one person have? And 
and then we you know and then the individual gets to a point of wanting to marry so this is why it is i for me i was advising that when you get to the point of wanting to marry you start to shed it is a good step to enter into celibacy just hand it to god and move forward into the process of god trying to help you to find your husband or your wife so you can shed the past and get delivered get get delivered now you don't want to continue you know individuals if they continue while they're looking for a husband with the past following them and then they marry how many and then marriage there'll be so much turbulence and i believe individuals may not even know where it's coming from right there'll be so much turbulence i'm reading now from the book of jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8 and it states and i saw when from all the when again people are trying to attack people not attack but people are trying to connect with my head um just bear with me god is making me stronger in jesus name i am aware of what is happening um <laughs> so we we thank god god is healing and protecting my head in jesus name so just bear with me and i rebuke them from challenging and attacking my head in jesus name i pray amen so let's continue to read i'm reading now from the book of jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8 and it states and i saw when for all the the causes whereby backsliding israel committed adultery i had put her away and and given her a bill of divorce right so for these are those the god is talking about those who have backslidden from god like those who have backslidden from from christianity right so those who have created a covenant the bible calls us the bride of christ so for those who have made a created a covenant with with jesus with god and the holy spirit saying yes we are your bride um and have but black backslidden god is saying and give her a bill of divorce yet her treacherous sister judah fared not but went and played the harlot also right basically leaving god's side so god can god is also calling you know those who are backsliding from from him a divorce right those who are not listening to his word right so god takes us through the process of perfectly being obedient to him listening to his word and then when we are married right as individuals when you find your own husbands and wives when i find my own husband you will be obedient it is a easier process so it's better we you know individually for those who are not married yet go through the hard processes now right god is god becomes your husband i can't explain it you have to just go through it right god becomes your husband god becomes your husband right god becomes your husband and you know there is a favor there as well I know there's a lot of favor in physical marriage but there is a lot of favor when you are obedient to to God your husband as the bride of Christ. Right you're obedient to him you're following his his will. Right you're not listening to any other report but his own. Right so you move as if you move with that same type of favor 
right? You move with that same level of favor, being obedient to God. And practicing to be a wife or a husband or a better wife or a better husband. Right, so I want us to pray now. The, um, let me just read the scripture. Um, I'm, I'm reading now with the scripture points. We always use scripture points to pray. Um, I'm reading now from the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. And it states marriage is honorable in all, in all. And, a, and, the, bed, and the bed undefiled. So let's ask, ask God for strength. I'm not reading the whole verse. But I'm just reading up, up and to undefiled. So it states, marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. And the bed undefiled. So God is saying both marriage and a bed undefiled. God sees it as honorable. Right? So you receive... You receive honor from God when your bed is undefiled before you are married. God will honor you. Right? You're practicing. Marriage is Christianity. You're practicing. It's preparing you for your own husband. That is what I'm seeing with God. That is what I'm seeing with God as I'm walking with God. God is just preparing me. And when you do it right, there is a lot of honor. There is a lot of honor. The enemy will attack like usual. We know that it's not old, right? Sorry, it's old. I was going to say it's not old, but this doesn't make sense that I said that. It is old. We know the enemy will attack. Right? But a, a bed under fire, God is saying, is honorable. Right? So think what. How can God honor, honor us by, by getting married, how he has called for us to, to get married, for, for us being perfectly obedient to him? How are the ways God can honor us? I, I can just, I'm trying to think, but I'm just thinking there's so many ways, right? When you're asking for, for you're using your prayer points, you're asking God for this, you're asking God for this, you're asking you know, just for peace, you're asking for so many things. How many ways? There's so many ways God can honor. There's so many ways. Right, so I want us to use this scripture point to pray that God will help us. That God will help us to have honorable marriages for those who are in marriage and for those who are hoping to marry. And for those, you know, and for, for us to all have an undefiled bed, that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth to have an undefiled bed, that he will honor us for being obedient to him and his word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, I want us to speak in tongues. For those who can't speak in tongues yet, um, prophesy, start, start stating, God, help me to have an undefiled bed. God, um, help, help me to have an honorable marriage. Just start professing, prophesy, speak. And we can just, for the rest of us, we'll speak in tongues for those who can speak in tongues. So let us speak in tongues in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Azov. Lord, help us to have an undefiled bed. And in the future, Lord, help us to have um, a, a, a honorable marriage, a marriage that you have called for us to have. And for those who are married, Lord, help them to have honorable marriages and help them to have an undefiled bed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Azov. It is a dedicated, 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 it is a d
Lord, help us not to have an undefiled bed. Lord, help us to, to keep. Lord, help us to keep our bed, our, our beds pure. In accordance to your will, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as a Lord, help us to have an honorable marriage for those who are about to marry, for those, for those who are about to marry, for those who are hoping to marry. For those who are already married, Lord God, help us to have an honorable marriage. Lord, honor us. Lord, honor us. Lord, honor us. Lord, honor us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And as you're faking, said it, 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 Lord, we, we call forth your honor. Lord, Lord, honor us. Lord, show, show us honor. Lord, show us honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord, show us honor. Lord, honor us. Lord, honor us. Lord, honor us in our lives. Lord, honor, honor our jobs. Lord, honor our businesses. Lord, honor everything that you can honor in, in accordance to your will for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord, as we are walking in obedience to you, Lord, your word is stating that you are that we are to be honored, that it is honorable. Lord, so we want you to honor us in turn. Lord, honor us. Lord, honor us.
In the name of Jesus Christ and as if we prayed. Amen and amen. We're praying about marriage, so we need to pray seriously. We need to pray. We need to pray and, and ask God to have and take full control. This is the last scripture point we'll be praying with before we pray um, using our personal um, scripture points. I'm reading now from the book of Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. And it states, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No one, no one of these shall fall shall fail no one of these shall fail none shall want her mate right so god is saying that let me continue to read for my mouth it has commanded and he and his spirit it has gathered them so god's saying in this scripture he has gathered our mates to us that we should not want for our mate. God is already called for, for our mate. He's already gathering our spouse to us. For those who are not married yet. God is already gathering. Gathering our spouse. The Bible states here. And his spirit. It has gathered them. Right. Um, it states. Let me read that again so I can break it down. So you can understand it a bit better. Seek ye out the book of the Lord. Right. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read no one no one of these shall fail so no word of the lord shall fail none shall want thy thy mate the bible says thou shall not want thou shall not want so god is stating that it is already ours and we continue to read for for my mouth it has commanded so god is saying from his mouth from god's mouth it has he has commanded and his spirit, so it's not just his mouth, but his spirit, it has gathered them. So God has gathered our mates. God has gathered our husband, uh, uh, my husband, your husband individually, your husbands individually, your wives individually to you. God is saying he has already prepared them for us. So we have to just pray, continue to read his word. Continue to read his word, continue to pray, read his word, be obedient, right? Be obedient to his word, right? Hold on to his word, pray. This is a commandment. God is saying his spirit has already gathered our mates, our mates, our spouses, right? We are not to want. God will see when is the right time for your husband or your wife, right? To come and to be in your life. God will see, God will see, God will, God will see it. Right, God has commanded it. So it's already happened. Right, you're yet to just walk into your husband or your wife. Right, it's already been spoken. It's already done. Right, at the beginning, we were, t we, were, we were praying about believing in the report of God. Not looking at the report of what the world is doing. But believing in the report of God, what God has said for, for your life. What the Bible says that you are to have. It is the report of God. This is the report of God for your life. There is no other report that can speak or say a thing. It is God. That is the highest report for our lives. Right? And the only report. You just blare out anything that is not. That is, that is fighting against whatever God is saying. You just blur it out. It's none of your business. It is not your business, right? Believe the report of God's word, right? Believe the report of God's word. Believe the, God, the report of God's word, especially concerning marriage, right? The first lesson we're taught is how God creates in the Bible. 
then we, we also learn the relationship that God wants with man, right? And then we see, then we see Adam and Eve, the first family. So this is what God chose for us to see first. Right? This is what God chose for us to see first, marriage, creation, marriage. Right? Family. So God has, has commanded for, us, for, for it to be, that you will not be. Us as individuals, we will not want our mate. God has already, thou shalt not want. It's already there. It is, God will place it as a desire in your heart. It's for us to just pray. Pray and believe. Push forward and our mate will come. We will find our mate. We will bump into him or her. It's already there. God has stated he has gathered them. Do not believe any false report. So let us speak in tongues. That God, we know that you have gathered our mate. Lord, help us to meet our mates, our husband or our wife individually at your appointed time. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, help us to know who our mate is individually. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. At your appointed time. Lord, we, are, we already know it is done. You have gathered them for us. You have gathered them. It is a commandment with your mouth. Your spirit has gathered them for us. Lord, help us to walk in your will so we can correctly find who is for us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That we're walking in the way. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The way, the truth and the life. Not the world, not the worldly way, but in the way, the truth and the life that we can find our husband or our spouse, our husband or our wife. In the mighty name of Jesus individually, let us speak in tongues. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord, help us to find, help us not to want. Lord, we know you've already found our mates. I rebuke, help saying, helping, helping um, for us not to find. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. But Lord, your word states in the mighty name of Jesus that, that you have gathered our mates. You have gathered them. It is a commandment that we are not she especially. God knows as women it is, it is a bit harder for us. right? But Lord, also see that it, it, is, it is the man that also needs a helper. Lord, help us to, 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 to walk in accordance to your will in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth that we will meet our mates. We will meet who you have called for us to be with. You will meet, we will meet individually who you have called for us to be with in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Let us speak in tongues. Ida 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 
in a mighty name of Jesus Christ and as we've prayed amen God just placed it on my my mind there's also a, a trap of the enemy that is currently happening now that, that even in homes even in home spirits are trying to are trying to marry but ma marry those who are living in homes those that they're, they're trying to marry those who are living in homes also trying to harm those, especially women, who are living in, in homes. So they can now elevate themselves and now marry a second wife. There are certain practices for those who, who marry a first wife and somehow she, she passes on. But that, that elevates or just stays in some kind of, um, stays in some kind of entrapment. And they use that to that suffering to, to elevate their second marriage. But God is exposing, has exposed this to me that even in homes, you can move into a, you know, in the, I'll be that Jesus saying, but individual can move into a home. And peop, and and women can be, or men especially as well. I, I don't want to just say it's just, um, I don't know, again, how other cultures work. But God, I don't know the culture, but God is just saying this is what is happening. But um, men and women, you know, you can move into a home. And somebody's um, some kind of covenant, right, to advance themselves. Hoping, you know, uh, individuals who are renting that home will fall in love with some kind of spirit. Right? not rise, sex, um, sp spiritually now sleep with that spirit and not rise. As the Bible states, right? Anything outside of, uh, outside of the obedient marriage, anything outside of the undefiled bed, right? God, is sa God, God states it's, it's not honorable, right? Right, so there are also situations where people are being set up. People are being set up to, to marry or to, to fornicate with, with spirits. And this stops an individual from rising. So I want us to pray that God will soak our homes, any home that we're renting, any, any home that we've lived in. In the mighty name of Jesus, that he, he's soaking our environments. In the mighty name of Jesus, that God, you have called us your bride, the bride of Christ that you are our spiritual husband. So no other spiritual husband can speak for us. No other spiritual husband has any legal right to speak or, or say or have a stake in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, or to touch us because Lord, you have called it fornication. You have called it fornication so they are sinning and causing others to sin. And your word said it is better to, to not make an individual sin than to just, than to hang it is better for an individual to, to hang a ghost stone on their neck and to throw themselves into the river than to cause another to sin. So these are the things that are happening. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, soak our environments. Lord, your word says you keep your angels charge over us. Lord, your word says you keep your angels charge over us. Lord, your word says you keep your angels charge over us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord, keep your angels charge over every environment. That we're, that we're currently living in, that we, end, that we step into, Lord God, we will, in the mighty name of Jesus, in, we will move forward. We will move forward. We will move forward. We will move forward in obedience in accordance to your will for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord, you have called us a bride of Christ. Let us speak in tongues. Let us speak in tongues. For those who cannot speak in tongues, just start prophesying. Stop covering your homes with the blood of Jesus, the, the environments that you enter into. That you, no spiritual husband can speak for you. You are the bride of Christ. Jesus has called himself your spiritual husband. 
right? He, he is a, he is a God that is a spirit. He's spiritual. He's spirit, right? He's a God that is spirit that came in the flesh and died and came back again, right? So he's a spiritual God. So God is your husband spiritually. So they cannot, there is no right. No spiritual husband has any sort of right to call himself your husband in the mighty name of Jesus. No spiritual wife has any sort of right to call themselves a spiritual wife in your lives because Jesus stands as that. This is the reasons, many reasons why he died on the cross for us, right? Any sort of marriage, the Bible states it is to sleep physically with flesh. It is not spiritual, right? We become one body, right? That's what the Bible states with individually your husband and your wife. That is an obedient marriage. That, that is a, a honorable marriage. So let us cover our environments in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, keep your angels charged over any environment that we're yet to enter into. Lord, we call, we, we send your angels, your angels there in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask your angels to keep charge over the environments we're living in, any sort of, any environment that we're always constantly in. Lord, keep your, your, your angels charge over, over that environment. Holy Spirit, we invite, invite you into those environments in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let us pray. Let us pray. Lord, your word says we are your bride. Lord, show up for us as your as our spiritual husband. Lord, show up for us. Jesus Christ and Nazareth is the only God we're speaking to right now. And the Holy Spirit and, and Father God. Lord, you have called yourself, you have called us the bride of Christ. Lord, you have said you are preparing us for the day that you will come and take off the spots from our body, from, from our gowns. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Lord, show up for us as our husband. Lord, show up for us as our husband. Lord, show up for us as our husband in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Lord, show up for us as a husband. Lord, show up for us as a husband. Lord, show up for us as a husband. Hey, kiss, said it, 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 Lord, also show for our family members. The, also the environments that they're in. Lord, cover them with cover them with your blood, Lord God. Cover, also cover us and, and the environment, environments that we're in with your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Lord, also cover the environments that the environments that we're in with your blood, our family members, Lord, keep your angels charge of every environment that they're staying in constantly and their homes, wherever they're staying and whatever environment that they will be entering into. Lord, we send your angels forth, Lord, to keep your angels charge over them. And we soak, we soak their environments with your blood and our environments with the blood of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Let us continue to pray. Ira 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 ke sa ri 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 
In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we've prayed, amen. God has done something for us. God has done something for us. Let us thank God. He has done something for us. There's just no, no weapon form. Against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment shall be condemned. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus Christ stands as our spiritual husband, our spiritual wife. He stands as our spiritual husband. No spirit has any right to stand. No spiritual husband. No spiritual husband can challenge that love. No spiritual husband has any right. No other person, no spiritual husband, no other person has that right. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Until God has, until we have confirmed it ourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, no other God can speak for us, but from the God we are serving. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we, we, we invite the Holy Spirit inside of us. We invite Jesus Christ inside of us. We invite, we invite God the Father inside of us. Lord, your word says you live within us. Lord, we live within our minds, live within our souls, live within our bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Lord, you get all the honor, you get all the praise. We give you all the honor, the glory, the praise. Lord, from every teaching, every gathering that is held, Lord, you receive all the honor, the glory, and the praise, not man. You, Jesus Christ, and as of your name alone, Lord, um, thank you for dying for us. Um, God, God the Father, Holy Spirit, Lord, you receive all the glory, the honor. Lord, we worship you, we give you all the honor, not man. Not man, not man, not man, not man, not man in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord, it is you that chooses who gets the honor. Lord, and help us to see that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as we pray, amen and amen. God is working. God is working. Please share this video with, with your friends, those especially who, are, who want to get married. Those who are going through the process of marrying, God is taking me through, through, through certain things and exposing certain, certain things to me. So I want you to be aware of what, how to pray, what to pray about. So please share this with your friends. Please share this video, especially those who are, 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 are hoping to marry. Also for those who are married, share, share this video with them. Again, especially for the environment, for those who are renting the environments that they're in. The environments that are in, that the, that the enemy, we, we understand now that the enemy can use individuals to, 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 
to try to destroy to try to destroy homes to try to destroy families and in turn reduce the number right this is the plot of the enemy to reduce the number of of nations proper nations popula the population of nations right so it could be any 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 nation it could be any nation but this is a, a strategy of the enemy and we rebuke it. We have, we have renounced it. Our prayers have shut and closed this door. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, it cannot work. It cannot work. It cannot work. We have closed that door. We have shut that door for the Bible states that you have shut the door. No man can reopen. And any door you have closed, any door you have opened, no man can shut. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, no man can open any door you have shut. No man can open any door you have shut. No man can open any door you have shut. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, share this video. Um, just bear with me. I want to get the the book for us to for those who would like to give their lives to Christ. Just give me two seconds. I just want to get the book. Okay. I repeat that in Jesus' name. Um so I want us to also pray now with our uh, using our personal scripture points. We normally put together we, we normally put together, um, we normally put together out of scriptures, um, out of prayer points. So we, we were normally asked to create prayer points, but to activate those prayer points, we create scripture points, right? So we find scriptures that activate those prayer points. So I want us to use um, um, those scripture points to pray together. I don't know whatever you're asking God for. Um, individually, I want I want us to pray as um, corporate prayer, a group. The Bible says, "Where two or three are gathered in His name, so shall it be done." So I, I want us to to pray using these scripture points. It doesn't have to be the same. You do not have to share these scriptures with with us openly. So I know we're all individually in our homes or whatever environment we're in. So let us just take time to find um, whatever scripture that makes sense to whatever you're asking God for right now. And let us pray in agreement so God can do this, can answer our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And as if I'll just give you some minutes to find your scripture. I'm look, still looking for my scripture point. <laughs> Just bear with me. I want us to do that before those who would like to give their life to Christ. And for those who don't have scriptures, God has placed a design in your heart. So pray, do your best to pray. And just say in Jesus' name, the Bible says, wherever we ask for in his name, so shall it be done. 
So just by saying in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, God has answered and is hearing your prayer. Your prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, so I found my scripture point. I hope you found your scripture point too. So I want us to prepare to pray. So you can prophesy your scripture point. You're in your own homes. I'm going to pray. I'm going to just speak in tongues. I don't want you guys to hear mine. <laughs> so you can just, you can prophesy since you're, you're not, um, we, can't, we can't hear you. <laughs> so just pray. And I'll just, um, you can prophesy, I'll, I'll speak in tongues, but we're praying with, as one body and we're, we're walking boldly to God's throne with these scripture points that God will answer in the mighty name of Jesus, everything that we're asking him for. So um, let's just start to speak in tongues. And for those who are prophesying, you can start to prophesy also.
Name of Jesus Christ and as if we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, kissa, did it, did Hold your hands on your heads. Let us pray. Let us pray. Hold your hands up yet on your heads. Place your hands on your heads. I'm saying, hold your hands on your heads. Place your hands on your heads. Let us pray. Just do your best for those who can't speak in tongues. Do your best. Just, just speak in tongues. Let the Holy Spirit guide your mouth. Just speak in tongues. Let us speak in tongues. Name of Jesus Christ and as we pray. Amen and amen. I don't want us to stop praying. I don't know if um, some of you are feeling like that. God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. 
and of love and a sound mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord you have not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind Lord you have not given us the spirit of fear but of power of love and a sound mind but of power and of love and a sound mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth and for those who have been convinced you have listened to this ministry you've been watching what God has placed on my heart to, to, to share with you and you want to become a, a, a child of God you want to join the kingdom of God you want to enter into the new covenant and and you and this new covenant is you believing the believing that Jesus died on the cross for you that he died he 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 rose again in three days so he came back in the flesh he rose again in three days and this covenant is the covenant that that has allowed us to use the name Jesus Christ and Nazareth to access God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth and for those who have fallen away and you want to come back and you want to renew your covenant with God, I would like for you to repeat these words with me. These words can be found in the book of 2 Kings chapter 3. I would like for you now to repeat these words for me. If you want to enter into the, the kingdom of God and join the covenant that Jesus died on the cross for you, he forgave all your sins. He, 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 he hung on the cross. The Bible states that whoever, hung on a, on, whoever hangs on wood is cursed. So he hung on wood. So he was cursed. He died so we do not have to. He's protecting us. His love continues to live within us. He lives within us. He, he lives his life. He lives his life through us and guides us on how to live our lives perfectly as he did. But he died so we do not have to. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. He was cursed so we do not have to be cursed. So we cannot be cursed. He, he forgave our sins. So our sins are forgiven already. We just have to acknowledge that he's the one and ask God for forgiveness. Right? This is how we acknowledge. This is how we acknowledge God. So I want us to repeat these words. These words after me. And the king stood by the pillar. And made a covenant before the Lord. To walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments. And his testimonies. And his statutes. With all his heart. So here you say with all your heart. And all your soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book, the Bible. And I want us to repeat all together and all the people joined in the covenant. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I welcome you into the kingdom of God. You're now my brother and sister. You're now our brother and sister. Right? God is working for you now. Um, and I want you to get a, a Old King James Bible. I want you to read from an Old King James Bible. <laughs> Do your best. I know it's hard again to... Um, I know it's old English, but but what we can do, what I tend to do is um, search for the words and understand and understanding their meaning because the Old King James Version is the first translation of English of the Bible, right? So it is the authentic. So do your best to read from the Old King James Bible. Do your best. Well, the, the King James Bible, do your best. Um, I want us now just to ask God for to forgive for those who have asked um, 
for those who have given their life to Christ. I want you to now ask God for any, for ask God for forgiveness and for help from anything that would hinder you, could possibly hinder you from walking um, with God. Start praying about the things now that you know that may challenge you. Right? We've prayed about this this um this teaching. For those who've just joined, please watch again. But we've prayed about something that tends to hinder individuals, right? And God has covered it, covered us. But again, we will teach about it again and we will pray about it again. So it's an ongoing thing. Right? So I want us to take a minute to ask God to forgive our sins, especially those who have just um entered into the kingdom of God. So I'm going to give us a minute to individually um, ask God for forgiveness for many things we've done. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we prayed, amen and amen. So welcome again into the kingdom of God. Let me just pray for you, Lord. Thank you for, for bringing them here to this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for, for allowing them to, to see you, to be convinced and to give their, their lives to you. Lord, your word say, states that an angels at heaven start to, to, to worship and to, to rejoice when, when one soul gives their life to Christ. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Lord, we know you're rejoicing for these souls. Lord, we know you're rejoicing for these souls. Lord, again, we ask you to take full control over us. Lord, we want your spirit, the Holy Spirit, to have full control. No, no other spirit, not any worldly spirit, but your spirit, Lord God. We, we have invited you in. Lord, we have also asked for forgiveness. For Lord, so, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, we've acknowledged you as Christ. We've acknowledged that you've come in the flesh. We acknowledge your, your covenant. And Lord, we have fed on your word. Lord, help us to hold on to you. Lord, help us to hold on to you. Help, help our bodies, our spirit, our souls to hold on to you. Lord, keep our, our, our body as one body with yours. Lord, keep our body, our spirit, our souls as one body with yours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we've prayed. Amen and amen. And for those who would like to give um, tithes and offering, you can see PayPal and you can see um, Cash App. So you can see the ministry's name. So you can use those names to, to give your tithe and offering. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will, will be also. Right? So this is a part of my treasure. I am, I am showing you and sharing with you um, a treasure that God has given me, right? So in this ministry, this is a treasure. This is a percentage of what I'm giving to God. I'm sharing with you, right? There's also offering um, in terms of money. There's also your time. There's also service, right? But the amazing thing about offering, just bear with me. I'm just looking for the scripture. The amazing, about, the amazing thing about offering, I'm just reading now from... Just bear with me. That God has given me a revelation and about um, offering and tithe. I'm reading now from the book of Malachi. Verse 3 to 10. Sorry, chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. And it states, Bring ye all the tithes into into the storehouses so the storehouses of the churches right ministries that there that there may be meat in god's house right and prove me now wherewith saith the lord of hosts if i will not op open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it so what god is saying that what god is saying here that he will give you by paying your tithe giving any sort of percentage to god 
right? Especially your 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 um your offering, your treasure, right? Serving in the ministries, um, whichever way you can. God is saying that He will open the windows of heaven to you, and there will not be enough room for the blessings He gives you. Um, it also states in this scripture, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. So God is saying he will rebuke the enemy for your sakes, that you get extra protection because you're now a part of what God is doing. You're supporting God's vision. You're supporting God with whatever you're doing personally as well, but what, whatever you're doing um, as one body as well with ministries, that God is saying he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. So God will stop any sort of devourer from touching any sort of fruit, any sort of, um, any sort of um, thing God has given you to prosper. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. So God will, will guard what, what is yours and it will, it will, be it will come out at every appointed time the appointed time god has called for it to come out saith the lord of hosts so god is is saying that as you are pushing his ministry forward he's protecting what you are what you have even more so even more so he's pushing everything that you you're doing because you are pushing what he is doing right because you're you understand that ministries are are helping other Christians, right? This ministry, um, this ministry's aim is to help individuals go to school. So we're gonna start from from Nigeria, and then we're gonna go to whatever God lead, wherever God leads us to go. But that's the aim. So our so, so the offering for this ministry um, is going going there. That's where God has placed it on my heart. So again, you're pushing. The ministry's vision you're pushing um others to to go to school and you're pushing the ministry again other things that the ministry will need so the ministry can keep moving forward right so god is saying he will rebuke the devourer he will he will protect what is yours but most importantly he will open the windows of heaven that you will be blessed and you will not be able to have room to to receive to receive the blessings that he will give you. So let us pray for those who have given, who are given and have given their offerings. Lord, thank you, Lord, for, 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 placing, for placing this treasure in their hands. Lord, thank you for allowing them and placing on their hearts to push, to push your ministry, to push the things that, that concern you, Lord God. Lord, bless them as your word says, open the window of heaven. Lord, let them, let them not lack Lord, let, let, their, let the, the windows of heaven, like your word says, be open to them, that they will not have it, that there will not be enough room. They will not have enough room to contain what you have in store for them as they're blessing this ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we prayed. Amen and amen. God is working. God is working. Please share this video. Please, please share this video with your friends, especially those who are... Um, hoping to get married. There's another video um, close next to this video. Um, I'll put the same title, so please follow. Um, it is the process that God is putting and showing me. Um, me, for those especially who are dating and trying to find um, your husband. Remember the Bible says God has already gathered, gathered them with his spirit. So your husband is already there. Your wife is already there. It's just for us to walk in the will of God individually and to find him and to find her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as if it's already done. We just have to step and <laughs> the right time and season and we will see our husband. We will see we will see our spouses individually in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as if we pray. Amen and amen. I'm off. I'm off. May God continue to strengthen you. God, you get all the glory. And Lord, we continue to give you all the glory. We continue to give you all the glory, Lord. And ask you, Lord, to give those who are trying to be ministers, give them courage to speak on their own platforms. Lord, give them courage to have boldness to speak. Um, 
on their own platforms, on the, the own, their own ministries. Not to hide behind people in the mighty name of Jesus, but to speak for themselves. And not to act as you. For Lord, your word says that it is sin. It is a sin to cause others to sin. It is even, it's even to the point of death to cause others to sin. So Lord, help them to find their own ministries. Lord, guide them in finding you. Lord, help them to help them to help them to push forward your ministry. Lord, help them not to do anything drastic spiritually, but Lord, help them to, to physically go online and build a ministry that you have called for them to have. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we've prayed. Amen and amen. I'm off. God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow. If not tomorrow, I think um, it'll be best we see on Thursday because Wednesday is closed. So I'll see you on, on Thursday um, at 8 p.m. If I'm not on exactly at 8 p.m., bear with me. I will be on, especially if you do not see anything telling you in the story, the story that I will not be, um, um, not that I will not be on, but I will be changing the date of um, the time we meet for worship. So again, keep looking at the story when you're not sure if um, I will be ministering um, at a particular point in time or day, right? God bless you. God bless you. Be strong, right? God is showing us that he's already done it, right? We just have to walk in obedience. It's already done. That's why the Bible says, thou shall not want. It's already there. You cannot want for something that is already there. All right? Hold on to God. God bless you. God bless you and I love you. <laughs> okay, bye.